Hi, Rob here at the Rack Shop, and today we are gonna go over the Yakima forklift rooftop bicycle mount. And here we have the box for it, and we already pulled everything out of the box. Uh, and if you've seen any of our other videos, normally we do it in a closed environment, but today we have our shop manager here, and she's adamant that she laid in the sun. So here we are, hopefully the picture's still okay for you and the audio is okay, but uh, we've got a new microphone, so hopefully everything works out. So uh, here we have Yakima's uh, forklift uh, bicycle mount, uh, the box itself, and um, let me grab the tape measure real quick. That way if you're ordering it maybe to your work and need to get it home, you can get the dimensions and know that it's gonna fit your car. This should fit most vehicles, 54 inches long, six, by about six. So uh, the bicycle mount weight itself is seven pounds, so fully boxed and whatnot, um, just a little bit more than that. So we'll go ahead and get this out of our way. And as far as this product goes, there's really not a whole lot to it as far as the assembly process. Um, this will actually come already pre-installed. You just need to attach your skewer with your instructions and your readme first packet. There's this poly bag with this uh, vinyl cap, and that's just a protective measure. Once you've got it assembled, on some applications, the threading can stick up. You can put on this cap to help protect uh, protect your hands and your, your bike. So uh, just go over this real quick. So on the front here, there's three different notches, and you've got this under bracket. And this fits into one of the three notches depending on your crossbar thickness. Uh, quick little tip, if you're doing the Yakima round bar or maybe a Thule square bar, it's gonna go on the top one. And that'll be your most narrow spacing there. So as you go down, it'll accommodate thicker crossbars. As far as this front mounting uh, bolt, if you can see there, it's kind of a T-shape. And that's gonna slide into the bottom of that bracket. So when it's facing front to back, that'll allow that to drop in and then you give the bolt a twist, and then it'll catch on the base of this plate. And then once you uh, tighten it up, that'll grip down onto the load bar. So the same for the back. Go ahead and take this bolt off real quick. So the same for the back, you've got the same T-style bolt and multiple mounting positions there for you. Uh, here, you've got the rear wheel holder so this just uses a ratcheting strap, you pull it tighter, there you go. And it slides and adjusts just on this track here for a different crossbar spread. So uh, it'll actually accommodate a narrow crossbar spacing of a uh, minimum 16 inches. So, no, that's not 16, good idea, 16 inches. And you can carry up to a 35 pound bike uh, with that narrow crossbar spacing. Uh, if you do bump out the spacing wider, if you're able to, uh, 18 inches and up, you can carry up to a 40 pound bike. And all that is detailed in the instructions, which we do recommend reading before purchasing or installing, just to make sure that it's gonna fit not only your vehicle, but also the bike. Uh, and speaking of the bike, with this skewer setup, it'll fit uh, your standard quick release bikes, uh, 100 millimeters by nine millimeter skewer. Uh, there are adapters. If you have through axle bikes or other size bikes, you can use an adapter uh, on this mount. Uh, but for your standard bikes, they do need to have the safety tabs installed. If you remove those, it could slip. Uh, it's just not, not a good idea, and it's definitely not warranted by Yakima if you were to get a fork that doesn't have those or if you shave them down. Uh, you definitely wanna make sure those tabs are there. Uh, but, uh, so the max crossbar spacing will be 42 inches. Actually, we'll get into a few more of those specifications at the end, end of the video, so either fast forward or painfully stick around and watch the whole thing. But um, we'll go ahead and get it installed onto the rack behind us. Uh, here at the table, we'll go ahead and do a little pre-assembly. Um, actually, first, let me show you this front portion of the mount while we're up close. So once you have this uh, installed onto your vehicle, so this collar slides back, once you have this installed, what you're gonna do is once you have it tension, make sure that this knob is facing front to rear and then what you can do from there, you slide this collar forward 
and show you that again. So this collar has these little tabs here with holes. So once this is a slid in place, and then you install your skewer, your, your skewer prevents this from being able to slip back, thus preventing this knob from being loosened. So that's the security element uh, for your uh, rack to the vehicle. And that'll be secured if you pick up the Yakima SKS cores. So this actually takes just a single uh, core. So when this is tensioned tight, you have a core, you can tighten it, and that prevents this from being lifted and unscrewed. So you unscrew this back end to take out the skewer. So, um, so yeah, so one security element with this particular rack. And I'm trying to think of anything else that is might be of note for the install. Um, some applications, so like the vehicle behind us and a lot of other ones, you can adjust the crossbars to different spacings. Uh, that's helpful in uh, trying to get the mount set, but some vehicles have fixed point locations, uh, which is still usually not a problem. So this mount will slide back and forth to adjust for different crossbar spacings. Let's say your crossbar is here, well, and your wheel needs to go uh, somewhere around here. You can actually flip these around, so this end cap comes off pretty easily. And then you can take this off, take this off, and reverse mount them, and uh, that'll help with uh, different crossbar uh, spacings. So, or if the wheel, excuse me, gets gets in the way, uh, if the wheel holder, excuse me, gets in the way of the rear mount, you can flip those around and adjust them so they all work together. So we'll just go ahead and reinstall this end cap to make sure nothing falls off. There we go. Okay, so before you put it onto the rack, just make sure that everything is nice and loose. Okay, so we've got that open and we've got it on the middle setting. And I believe for these bars, which are the Yakima Jetstream crossbars, I believe the middle one is the correct one. So we'll go ahead and pre-install it or you can just have it in your back pocket and maybe we'll just put it in our back pocket so it doesn't fall off. Um, yeah, so that's it for here. It's gonna get a little tricky. I'm gonna take it over to the car, lay it down at least, and reposition the camera, and then we'll go from there. So stay tuned. Or I guess it'll follow this cut right now. Okay, so we've got the bike mount just resting onto the crossbar, and the contact points are rubberized, and that's to help protect your crossbar. So from here, we'll take our underplate and engage that onto the front bracket. Again, the second one looks to be the best way, best size for this particular crossbar. Uh, you may need to try a couple different ones uh, if you have different bars. So we're going to go ahead and kind of hold this up in place. We're going to get our bolt, actually slide the collar back, get our bolt through the center hole, give it a little quarter t twist, and I'm going to let that bracket kind of fall into place catching on that bolt and that'll help keep the bolt from spinning around. So from here, we'll just go ahead and tension this. And it is a pretty long bolt, so this may take a second or two. And that's, again, it's one bolt, and that's to help accommodate the thicker crossbars and also the thinner crossbars, so obviously it's gonna have to be longer to accommodate the thicker ones, so. All right, it's already getting pretty tight. So it's getting firm, so I'm gonna firm it up to where this is front to back, again, so we can slide over this collar. There we go. And then from here, we are gonna take our skewer and undo the knob on this, this end. Okay, and if you see the bolt actually has a specific shape that corresponds with the nut, so that's gonna fit in one way. So we'll go ahead and pass the skewer through. Wiggle till it's flat, there we go. I insert the knob on the far side and start giving it, uh, tightening it up. So you're not gonna wanna go all the way, but you are gonna wanna go take a lot of the slack out, but you do wanna make sure that you leave enough space for the forks on the bike to come down. So kinda go back and forth and then center it up. You wanna make sure there's enough play again, for those forks to be able to drop down, and then this will give you your final tension. 
And let's go ahead and take a quick peek at the back from here. Ooh. So again, this is gonna be pretty similar. Just gonna go ahead and swing up this bracket, twist the bolt, drop that down between, quarter turn, and give it a twist. Before we fully tighten it up, just gonna go ahead and make sure that it's facing completely straight on the vehicle. Don't wanna have it crooked. Not that it's gonna be anything harmful to the mount, but aesthetically, I just like the way when they look perfectly uh, perpendicular to the bars. All right, so that's nice and firm. So your final test, you're gonna grab the rack, give it a good shake. There's gonna be a little bit of play between the holder and the tray, that's perfectly fine. What you don't want is movement between the mounts and the bar. That's a big no-no and double check your work and tighten everything up. And as far as the rear goes, we're gonna go ahead and get this strap um, completely out and you can actually fold that back and then there's a little holder. You can slide that back there and that way the strap is out of the way for when you are gonna mount the bike. So and we actually have a bike here so we can go ahead and get that mounted so you can see the full process and maybe give you some tips that'll make things a little easier. But first we're gonna go ahead, open the skewer. Again, make sure we have plenty of room. All right, now I will move the camera back a little bit, grab the bike, and we'll finish up. Okay, so we've got a our bike here, and this is just an old road bike that uh, I put many, many miles on and have since <laughs> neglected it, but uh, it still rides great and will work for this video. So anyways, the first thing that uh, you're gonna do uh, for this one, you do need to remove your front wheel, so that's what we'll do first. Um, each bike is different, so you may have brakes to contend with, which loosen that up, and then you loosen your front wheel. Take off your wheel. So the next tip we have for you is not having to do with the main bike, your front wheel. So from here, what you want to do is make sure that you put it either in the back of the car or if you have the wheelhouse uh, accessory mount for your front wheel on the roof get that stowed away because I can't tell you how many times we've had uh, customers mention that they take off the front wheel, get the bike mounted, get it situated, and then take off and forget the front wheel, you know, laying next to the car or ne on, laying on a tree or something like that. So once you take it off, get it stowed, and that way you don't forget it. But we'll just throw this aside for now. Okay, and as far as this goes, the tip that we can give you here, don't just grab the bike here and try to, to mount it. It's gonna put you in a terrible position and you're not gonna be able to reach the roof. What you wanna do is go ahead and just get low. Grab low in the frame, low in the fork. Rotate up and then you can actually stand up with it. And that puts you up and in a good position to uh, maneuver your bike. So uh, I'm gonna redo this because I am on the, I need to lift from the opposite side. But that just gives you a good idea of how to lift it. So again, just go low and lift. So, but the additional tip we would have is to do that and put your back between the bike and the car. That way as you're raising or lowering your pedals, uh, there's no chance of them contact in the car. Sometimes if you're facing this way, you lift up, maybe you misjudge it, and you've got a nice pedal mark on your car. So again, put yourself between the bike and the car, lift up, and then you should be good to go. Okay, for loading the bike, we're gonna start by placing the rear wheel just gently on the wheel holder. And that doesn't have to be specifically in the right place at the moment. And on the front, we're gonna drop the forks down nice and even onto the skewer. Again, remember we left a bunch of slack to make sure we had a good landing spot for that. So for your first setup, there's gonna be a lot more adjustments. Um, the following ones shouldn't be as much. So from here, we'll give it a test closure. But again, that's way too loose. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten up the knob on the backside. So without completely letting go, switch hands or whichever one's more comfortable. Give that some, tighten that up a bit. And give it a 
test closure. Oh, way too much. I'm gonna loosen it back up. Ooh, I felt pretty good. Actually, that's pretty good right there. Huh, okay. That was quick, sometimes it takes longer, but once it's firm, give it a good shake. Make sure there's no slippage of the skewer to the fork tips. And then on, on the back, what you wanna do is make sure the wheel holder is directly center underneath the, wheel, the axle. If it's not, you can lift up your bike and then move the holder back and forth wherever you need to. And you can also rearrange the wheel to make room for that strap to feed through the center of the spokes. So we're going to feed the rear strap through, pull that nice and tight, and effectively you're ready to go. If you have locks in here, this is when you lock the skewer. Um, but another thing you want to do is get everything in good shape and make sure all the hard mounting points, fork tips, and mounts to the bar um, are, there's no slippage. And if there is, then go back and adjust accordingly. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, we, when you want to take this off, just everything in reverse. I'd say the big thing there, when you're bringing the wheel or the bike down, again, do the twist and then bring the bike down because you don't want to have big pedal scratches down the side of your car. So uh, for some of the more detailed specifications, uh, the forklift again is seven pounds uh, at 16 inch crossbar spacing. You can handle a bike up to 35 pounds, 18 inches up to 42. Yeah, 42 inches can handle up to a 40 pound, a 40 pound bike. And it can handle bikes with wheels from 20 to 29 inches and up to three inches wide. And for bikes with up to a 48 inch wheelbase. So those are some of the more detailed specs on the type of bike that can be carried. Uh, more importantly, as I mentioned earlier, your bike does need the front safety tips uh, if you've shaved those off, you know, for uh, racing purposes or have a quicker exchange of the wheel, uh, you don't want to use this. It's not going to be warrantied. Um, also, it's a good idea to check with your bicycle manufacturer with so many different types of designs and materials being used. Um, it's a good idea to check with them to see if the bike is suitable to be carried by the fork tips. Um, you know, it just doesn't hurt to double check uh, just in case. Because the last thing you want is this bike, which you're probably going to have a more expensive bike than mine, uh, fly off the roof. That's bad for everybody. Um, other than that, again, some of the accessories, SKS lock cores, the wheelhouse adapter uh, or holder. That's your holder for the front wheel. You can put it on the crossbar, keep your wheel out of the car. Um, and if you don't have a 100 by 9 millimeter quick release skewer, if you have something different, uh, check out Yakima's. Uh, fork adapters. They have quite a few different ones to choose from um, to help accommodate your bike. So this is one of the two fork mount carriers that Yakima has. They have also the high speed, which is a really nice carrier. Uh, stay tuned for a video on that. Uh, the other style is uh, if you want to keep both wheels on, those upright carriers. So the front loader and the high road are Yakima's two options. Stay tuned for videos on those. But for more details on this particular product, click the link in the description below. For more details and other options on other products, visit our website, therackshop.com. Any questions at all on this unit, feel free to shoot us an email, hello at therackshop.com, give us a call, or come by our shop. So again, this is Rob with The Rack Shop. Hope this video was just a little bit useful. Um, yeah, and thanks for watching.